Hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest online event here at the University of California Merced. My name is Ricky Hill. I am your e-recruiter here at UC Merced. A very big welcome to you tonight. We are always so thrilled that you are taking a few minutes out of your evening to join us here for this live event. And tonight you are in for quite a treat. We are going to be talking about exclusively everything related to undergraduate admissions. Any question that you may have will probably get answered within this next hour, but we also have an opportunity for you for a few minutes of question and answer at the end. Before we get started, let me give you a couple of quick reminders about Zoom. If you need to adjust your audio settings, you can do that in the lower left corner of your screen. To change the size of your window, click on View Options in the upper portion of your screen. Lastly, and most importantly, as I mentioned, we will be saving a few minutes towards the end of our event tonight to get to your questions live. Go ahead and click on the Q&A button that is on your screen. You can send us those questions. We will get to those towards the end. And as I said, you probably will get everything answered throughout this fantastic presentation tonight. Once again, my name is Ricky Hill. A very big welcome to you tonight. I would like to go ahead and get things started by handing things over to my colleague and friend, Sheila. Thank you, Ricky. And hello, everyone, for joining us tonight for the UC Merced Emissions presentation. My name is Sheila Zhang, and I'm the Assistant Director of Transfer Initiatives for the Office of Emissions at UC Merced. I work primarily with community college transfer students throughout the state of California. I am co-presenting tonight with my colleague and friend Juan Carlos Lopez. I'll go ahead and pass the mic over to Juan Carlos to introduce himself and get us started with this presentation. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we're going to go over some few deep minor details in regards to our campus. Um, I am an admission advisor for the campus. I cover basically Southern California. I do cover both transfer and first years. That's freshmen who are applying to our campus. But we're going to give you a little bit more insight as to who we are as a university and who we are as a campus. So one of the things that a lot of you have to think about is when you're applying to the University of California, a lot of times we always think about a particular campus in your mind and you don't think about the whole spectrum of the University of California. If you think about the University of California, think of it as this way. The University of California is considered to be one university with nine options. And it is very important that you as an individual who's thinking about applying to the University of California is consider these factors when looking at these campuses in regards to where do I, how far do I want to go from home and to study? How close do I want to be home uh, from home? Uh, how big do I want my campus to be? Or where do I want my campus to be also? Location, location, location. Those are important factors. For example, if you're looking for a campus that has over 30, 35,000 students and you're looking probably at the big three, which we call UCLA, Berkeley, and San Diego. If you're looking for a mid-sized campus, anything between 21 to 28,000, you're looking at Santa Cruz, Davis, Santa Barbara, Irvine, and Riverside. But if you're looking at anything in that's smaller than that, that would be considered us as a campus, which is less than 10,000. But one of, the, one of the driving force in looking at any given campus uh, should be, does the campus I'm looking at, do they have what I want to study? That's always important because many times or another students tend to just apply on the namesake, which is still fine. But at the same time, you got to think about your 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 role and your direction in which you want to go in regards to the University of California. And why apply to the University of California? Think about these factors. One of the things that you should be considering is that the University of California is considered to be the Ivy League Schools of Public Education. At the same time, we do have some great opportunities for students to do research. And also our professors have been recognized worldwide in their research. And that's something that our, our system provides our students with opportunities when they, they start thinking about coming to a UC campus. So how does UC Merced play, play a role in the whole spectrum of the University of California? Next week, we got to think about why students do think about UC Merced as an opportunity for them to apply to. First of all, you know, we are a friendly campus. We have strong success support for our students and that, that our students are doing greatly after they graduate or while being on campus. Our, our programs are designed to making sure that they engage themselves not only with the research, but also engage with the learning with the professors that they have in, in, in their classes. Also, we also have some great clubs and organizations on campus. And with that, we want to make sure that you look at all the opportunities, but we're going to show you what those things are. Now, when all of you are thinking about um, a university, a lot of you might be thinking, you know what, ranking is important to me. To be honest with you, ranking, it is important, but it's not the not, it's not the, the end of all things. Keep in mind that 
when you look at ranking students, think, oh, you know, your school being so young, maybe you might you might not have the recognition as you do. But I want to tell you right now that our campus has been growing in the right direction, and we're on the rise to making sure that you understand that you the, the University of California Merced has become part of the top 100 universities in the and that's really something that you need to understand if that's something you're looking for. But the best part about this is that we are graduating our students on time. Our students are also getting the best financial aid packages from our campus, which you're going to see as a, throughout tonight. And also you're going to find out that uh, our social mobility is actually on the rise as well, meaning that our students are getting more access to things that are important to the success of their career or college career here at UC Merced. So one of the things that I want you to understand is that the campus itself uh, which is on a, on a growth mode. This is what it looks like as of today. Now, be mindful that this campus is still uh, growing and we're thinking about adding more buildings in the future. For example, starting in October, they're planning to uh, start construction on new uh, research facility, medical research facilities for, for the campus. But if you look at this campus, you think about where, where it's at and how we as a campus really have grown. Think about this for a moment. Um, everything on your left or on your right, in a sense, is basically everything that is a little bit older than most, as opposed to the left. Everything on the left pretty much was open in 2020, and everything on the right is, was basically was open when the school opened in 2005, and from there, the growth mode. One of the things I always try to bring students' attention to is those arches right in the middle. Those arches are called the new beginning. And the new beginnings are, are there for a reason. When students do start at UC Merced, they walk through these arches as the beginning of their college career. And when they graduate, they walk the opposite direction as the beginning of their professional career. Another th great thing about our campus uh, is that the campus was built on top of a golf course. And for our, our campus, sustainability is one of the biggest factors that, that uh, makes our, our campus unique. What, what I mean by that, our campus runs on, on solar panel energies for, most, for the most part. And that's a great thing for our campus. And for that matter, we like to think that UC Merced is really really an important part of what the, the landscape in that area. And so what I'm gonna show you as to where we are as far as the campus is concerned. Next slide, please. Now, one of the things that a lot of you might think, you know, it's like, okay, where is UC Merced? You kind of show me a little bit of a glimpse of who we are. But one of the things I wanna show you is that UC Merced is located in the Central Valley or in the heart of California, as we like to say. When you think of that star, think of it this way. I think that that star is like that hole in that donut with everything nice and sweet. Because to the east, you do have Yosemite. And Yosemite uh, is, 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 is holds a special place for the campus because we're the only UC campus that has a relationship with the National Forest. And I'm going to get in, we're going to get into that. So how is that important to us? To the north, of course, you have Sacramento. To the south, you have Fresno. But to the west, you have San Francisco, Santa Cruz, and Monterey Bay. And from Merced and to San Jose, which is, you know, in between or, or, or Santa Cruz, there's Silicon Valley. And for those of you who might not know, Silicon Valley is, is a tech capital of the world. So a lot of our students are getting uh, exposed to those kinds of, of opportunities because we're situated right in the center. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that UC Merced is surrounded by a lot of tall buildings and what have you. We're actually a very small town and we're going to get into that. But one of the great things about doing that, we are surrounded by a lot of agriculture and we're not an agriculture university. But do keep in mind that under our environmental science or environmental engineer, our students do get engaged with the agriculture in the area. And that's something that's unique for the campus itself, because students are interested in that. And let alone when Yosemite plays a big role in the area, we have the opportunities for students to do more stuff in Yosemite, which we're going to get into down the road. Next slide, please. And also keep in mind that uh, as you start thinking about how the university itself, I like to think, next slide, I like to think that UC Merced represents the demographics of that of California. But do keep in mind that 99% of our students who who attend UC Merced are from California, and 40% of them do come from Southern California. It goes to say that students who live in Southern California like to go north, and students who, go, who live in the northern part go south. But one of the great things, too, is that I think that UC Merced is like a small uh, private school with a public education outcome. And why do I mean by that? It's basically is that when you have a small population, you are basically the center of your education by the professors, knowing that they're gonna help you and move in the direction that you wanna move and try to push you in that direction. Also keep in mind that our campus has a huge or large population of first generation on our campus. As you can see some of here, of, of some of the stats that you see in front of you, uh, we have a first generation as, as, as an average, about 67% of them are there, our first gens who are attending our campus. Next slide, please. So you see, 
we are looking at ourselves as looking to what we do. And I told you that we're surrounded by a lot of culture. Next slide. But keep in mind, we're, we're a city of 90,000 residents. Now, the great thing about the city of Merced is that you're going to find out is that you do have a very diverse food selection. Now, people, the city of Merced is working really hard to bring a lot of merchants to entice students to think about, you're not missing much because we're going to bring it to you. For example, like I said, you know, a very diverse food selection. You can find yourself eating Korean food, Thai food, uh, Indian food, Chinese food, uh, and of Mexican food. Or if you're one of the type of persons that likes to go with your your um, your chain of restaurants, we do have it at Chili's and, and an Olive Garden. And also the city's working very hard to revamp the mall. Uh, for those of you who says, you know what, I don't know if I could really attend, you go to this to go to this place, UC Merced, because I am a, a huge fan of In-N-Out. Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, we do have an In-N-Out in the city of Merced, so that's something that's going to entice you for that, if that's your thing, which is which is cool. We also have your Costco's, we do have your Targets, uh, we do have your Walmarts. Again, we try to bring you a lot of a lot of uh, the city's working very hard to bring in a lot of merchants to really give you an idea that just because we're a small city, it doesn't necessarily that we lack a lot of the resources that you may have back at home. And that's really good about our campus. But one of the things about that is that this, that they're living in, in Merced, you're going to experience all four seasons. You're going to experience fall. You're going to experience winter. You're definitely going to spring spring. And that's what makes you see Merced really unique because in the springtime, you see all the trees blooming, which is really nice to, to really a good view to see when you're around the campus itself. Next slide, please. But also, we also provide students with the opportunities to really, if you're that type of, of a person who likes to go out and, and venture out and enjoy nature. Next slide, please. We do provide also students with an opportunity to go out and do go out to our campgrounds, go to the go check out rivers. There's actually a lake next door to our campus. So a lot of students utilize that as a playground for when you know to on the downtime, but also in 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 downtown Merced we do have our our art we do have our we do have our our theaters and what have you. But this is great because again we try to provide you with enough resources for you to kind of get involved with at 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 Merced, and this is something that we really want to make sure that you understand that you're not necessarily missing a lot in regards to your town, so we're bringing a lot of stuff to you as well here at UC Merced. And we also do have a county fair that happens every year. So again, for those of you who are who are used to going to county fairs, we got one too here on, on, on here in the city of, of Merced or in the county. Next slide, please. Another thing too you want to be aware of is that when students decide to move away to, for school, uh, UC Merced does provide, next slide, housing. And one of the great things about our campus is that we do guarantee the first two years of housing uh, and one of the great things about that, and for transfers, we offer them at least one year of housing. One of the great things about our about our dormitories, we do have traditional dorming. We have these the sweet type of solid dorming. We do have apartment-like type type of dorming. And the great thing about too, you could also include your meal plan in your in your housing. And one of the great things about that, you don't have to worry about anything. And think about this for a minute. In in the community of how of the dormitories or housing at Merced. Uh, it's like a small city because you do have your, your police department and you have all the essentials that you need in order for you to survive as a student on our campus. Keep in mind, too, that throughout the campus, there are small markets that students can actually go to and buy their uh, the toiletries and what have you. So, that, again, you don't necessarily have to go out of the campus for to buy uh, the, all that stuff. Uh, if you want to buy big stuff, then you go into the city to do that as well. One of the great things, too, about our dormitories, and I'll tell you that from experience, our dormitories are a little bit larger than most UC campuses. They're more spacious, and that's something that we really, really uh, pride ourselves in that. Now, speaking of the meal plan in regards to living on campus, the meal plan is basically it's a buffet type of type of, leading, buffet type of, style of eating at the dining hall. And keep in mind, there are four stations that offer you Mexican food, Italian, Asian, and American food. There's one station that offers you the pastries. And, and let me tell you, a lot of students like to go to that first before they feed themselves. We do have officers with the, with the salad bar and fruit bar. And again, students can go in there for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And you could eat as much as you want because it is a buffet type of style of eating on our campus as well. Next slide, please. Again, in our dormitories, we do offer a lot of, of, of great opportunities because our, our dormitories are also equipped with all the essentials. There are some dormitories that do have kitchens, again, playrooms, and of course, study rooms as well for you to actually utilize for your success at UC Merced. Next slide, please. Another thing too you want to be considered too is that just because 
uh, as a campus, as we are growing, we do have over 200, 200 clubs and organizations on our campus. And also keep in mind that within within the campus and on the surrounding edges of the campus, you do, are you going to find yourself uh, l- looking at cows once in a while? They're they're out there. Yes, they are. And they're just basically eating on the pasture. But keep in mind, looking at clubs and organizations on our campus, if you can't find one that you don't like, um, we encourage you to start your own club. What better way to leave your legacy at a university by starting your own club on our campus? Now, keep in mind that you said, okay, you have some cool clubs. We'll also, next slide, please. We also do have uh, fraternity and sororities on our campus. And this is something that we pride ourselves in. Now, forget about the stereotypes that you, you know about uh, fraternity and sororities. At one time or another, the, the fraternity and sororities on our campus were, were deemed number one, not for what you think of, but they were deemed number one for community service, which I think that that says a lot about our students and their focus on making sure they give back to the community. Now, if you're thinking about, well, you know, yeah, you do have these great clubs, you do have uh, these fraternity sororities. What else? What else do you have to uh, they, that makes basically makes you uh, Merced unique? Well, next slide, please. One of the great things that we have on our campus, we do have festivals throughout the year. We have uh, culture activities throughout the year. But one of our biggest biggest um, uh, music festivals on our campus is called Ready for this one, the Cowcella Festival, not the Coachella Festival, the Cowcella. And again, just because, again, uh, this festival, I, I do think that we like to pay tribute to the cows in the surrounding areas. But at the same time, this is a good way for students to really kind of leave their academics for a while, kind of enjoy the evening or the day to, to listen to good music and to really enjoy themselves as to who we are. And we do invite professional performers to our campus. We want to make sure that you get some solid good music and so that you can be able to enjoy your stay at the campus itself. Next slide. And for those individuals who are interested about playing sports on our campus. We do recruit for uh, athletics. Keep that in mind. We belong to the North Atlantic Intercollegiate Athletics. Not necessarily, we're not part of the NCAA just yet, but we're working on that to making sure that that we apply to, to such to such agencies so that we can become part of that. But for now, we this is what we have. We have a men's, men's and women's basketball, cross country, soccer, volleyball, water polo, and track. But also keep in mind, just because we're part of the NIA, I'll let you know that our athletics, they're very competitive. And they've done some amazing things as a sport. And again, being part of this conference also allows students to basically say, hey, I could, I want to play that sport. It allows students to actually walk on and try out if they wanted to. Now, if this is not your thing, we do offer club sports. Uh, this you still compete at a high level. So keep that in mind. Or you could do intramural sports. You compete within your, with your colleagues there at the, at the school. But the one thing that makes this also unique is that the outdoors adventure when students can actually go out camping, go out hiking, go fishing, go rock climbing, or go just go on nature walk. One of the great things, too, that we offer through our partnership with uh, Yosemite is the idea that you could actually go up there and really enjoy the and, and, and just take breathe in, breathe in all the great, great scenery that you have there at Yosemite. Next slide, please. So those are the things that we do offer as far as our, our, our we're concerned. Now, looking at uh, our campus, we are, like I said, we're on a growth mode and we're trying to make sure that we provide students with the, the enough resources or enough majors that they say, oh, you know what, this is what we offer on campus. Next slide. So our campus is broken down into three uh, schools, the School of Engineering, the School of Natural Sciences, the School of Social Sciences, Humanities and Arts. Now, our most popular programs, and most of you probably will be asking, is Mechanical Engineering, Computer Science and Engineering, Biological Sciences, Management, management and business economics and psychology, and of course also on, on declare. Now, when we don't have impacted majors, uh, we do uh, take students who go on declare. Keep that in mind because of this. More times than not, when students go off to college, within the first two years of being in college, they'll change a major at least three times. And I know that because I was one of them. Okay, but as far as our programs are concerned, uh, we have added new programs like chemical engineering as a bachelor of science. In the engineer, we added a data science. And analytics or electrical engineering. Our civil engineering actually is, a, is about two years old, so it's a little bit older than, than that. And then in the natural science, we also offer data science and computing. And keep in mind that in the, under the physics, we did offer offer five options as well in there. In the biological science, you do have other four options in there. So you're allowed to really explore. This is just a kind of a, a glimpse as to the majors that we have, but also keep in mind that in, within the major that you're looking at may have another option. We also added an economics and in, in bachelor of arts or economics and bachelor of science. And we added also environmental humanities as, as a bachelor of arts. But the good, the new one that we offer in, in the social science humanities is the public health as a bachelor of science, which has an option for a, or a track 
for med school. So that's one of the one of the one of the great things about our campus. Again, we're trying to add as much as we can to give students the idea that we are we're heading in the right direction to making sure that we provide you all the resources or at least attempt to give you the idea that we we are moving forward and making sure that we provide you with all the essentials that you may need in order to be successful on our campus. This is why our motto is first, further, and forward. We were the first campus to be built in the 21st century. We got gone further from being open for 17 years. We've done so much, going back to the idea that we've now become top 100 university. And of course, we're moving forward in that sense too. Saying that, in the mechanical engineer, we added an option for aerospace engineering, and that's really cool. Now, this is another program. Next slide, please. Another program that we are offering our campus uh, from our campus is called the Bachelor's of Science to Medical Pathway. What this is basically, students, if you apply to this program, and if you're selected, uh, you'll you'll start as early as your first year in college, and you'll be tracked as to making sure that you follow all the requirements in order for you to graduate. Uh, from the, from Merced, then go into the medical school at USSF or the University of California, San Francisco. Again, we're going to track you to making sure you that that happens. Now, keep in mind that this program is 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 unique to UC Merced, but also keep in mind too that this is one of our most competitive programs. And also, I want you to be mindful that this program right now is focused on the students in the San Joaquin Valley, and there's a reason for that. Okay. Now, last for example, last year about two thousand plus students applied to this program. Uh, only 15 students were admitted to the program, but also keep in mind that the reason for that is because there's certain things that students have to meet because not only do you apply to the program, you have to do a supplemental application, but you also have to um, have an interview to in order to be chosen for this program. It is one of the great programs that you could have because also we, we, invest, we invest in the student to making sure that they're successful in such a program. If you're interested in your part of the San Joaquin Valley for now, you, this is something that you should consider applying for in, in, in this fall for fall of 24. Next slide, please. So you see, we are moving forward in that sense and, and going back to the idea for this program, building a new building for the medical research that we're doing on our campus. That's gonna be really cool. Now, again, going back to the idea that we are a small campus, that ratio 19 to one, uh, the great thing about those, that is that you get really get to be exposed to a lot of research. And keep in mind that 67% of our students who are at UC Merced are doing research. That's more than any other campus uh, that, that within the UC system. So we're doing something right. And that goes back to the idea because you do have that uh, that relationship with your professors and trying to give you the, the, the direction as to the research that you're doing. But only not only that, a professor can easily give you a recommendation because they do know who you are and your work ethics, and that's a good way of thinking of it. But see, we're moving in the right direction to making sure we provide you all the support, including, if you notice too, that our 44% female faculty, again, trying to write that balance because we want to make sure that students do have that support when they do come to UC Merced. Next slide, please. For you students who basically look at um, uh, that, that education doesn't necessarily just happen in the classroom, as I mentioned to you earlier, our relationship with Yosemite, we do have a leadership program at Yosemite. We do have a research research field station at Yosemite, and this is open for students who want to do research there. But the one thing that we also offer is a Shakespeare in Yosemite, which is in the springtime, where you know a play is put up there by 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 our our luxurious English department, where they put it together, and students can actually go enjoy in the middle of the forest and enjoy Shakespeare. And also, too, next slide, please. We also provide opportunities for you to go study abroad. Uh, and studying abroad, UC Merced does have forty countries that are, we engage with. And we do also have the UCDC, UC Sacramento. Now, these two programs are important to us because when, if you do decide to do them, um, the your roommates will be other UC students, which is kind of cool. Now, the UCDC, UC Sacramento is basically, uh, is, is you're asking to do internships either in Washington, D.C. or Sacramento with politicians. And you don't necessarily have to be a poli-sci major. Just the idea of doing internships with some of these politicians gives you more skills and experience. But the one thing that you should be aware of is that intercampus visitor program. So... Students who, who attend the UC system or become a student at a, at a UC campus, you have the opportunity to do what they call the intercampus visitor. In other words, if you're at a certain UC campus, let's say you want to see what life will be like at another UC campus, you can through this program, of course, with the permission of your academic advisor. So you get that experience throughout. And this is how we are connected as a university. And the idea that, you know, that that you see the UC system doesn't give you opportunities, we actually do because we're from believers that once you become exposed to a lot of opportunities, eventually you're going to give back to the community once you graduate from the campus as well. Next slide, please. 
So keep that in mind as you start planning to look for, for that. As now you prepare, I'm going to hand it over to my, my colleague, Sheila. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Now we're going to talk about preparing for the future at UC Merced. We talked about clubs and organizations and how you can get involved um, on campus, but we also have professional development opportunities for students to build your skills and your experience as you prepare for the next step in your career or for graduate school. We have official professional Greek organizations um, as well as business, service, pre-health, pre-law, pre-med, and engineering organizations to help you. For those of you who are interested in engineering, we have our um, Society of Mechanical Engineers. We have Calteach as well for those of you who want to go um, into a teaching career. And we also have the Law Clinic, which prepares those of you who are interested in a law career for um, law school. Being part of the University of California, research is at our core. So in case you didn't know, the University of California's mission focuses on public service, teaching, and research. UC Merced has over 18 research facilities, institutes, and centers. Many of our faculty are doing research on things such as stem cells, um, psychology, valley fever, and so much more. To highlight just the incredible research that our faculty and our students are doing um, on this slide here, we're showing a picture of the rover that went to Mars in 2020. So I don't know if you've heard, but in 2020, NASA had a mission to Mars and UC Merced um, Tribology Lab played a really critical role in this mission to Mars. Many of our faculty and students who are part of the UC Merced's Fundamental Tribology Lab actually um, were involved in making these little parts in this rover or this machine that's shown on this screen um, for the rover that was sent to Mars. So I think it's just really incredible and really is a testament to just the work that our faculty and our students are doing here at UC Merced, given the time that we've been here as a campus. If you're interested in research, but you're not really sure how to start um, or how to go about research, we do have the Undergraduate Research Opportunity Center. Every student, regardless of the major at UC Merced, can participate in research. Yorok is the center that will help you get connected to different research um, based on your major or areas of studies. So if you're not too sure how to get, go about research, but you really want to be involved, Yorok is the center that we have here that will get you connected to different research opportunities. Opportunities are not limited to just working in the lab. You can actually compete for your research. So um, I know that there are students who go to different states and even different countries in an undergraduate research symposium to display their research and to compete in their research. So if you come to UC Merced and you're interested in research, definitely um, check out the UROC Center at UC Merced. At UC Merced, it's not just about being successful in your classes. We also want our students to feel empowered. We have student support services to ensure that our students feel supported, whether if it's in the classroom, for your classes, or if you just need um, different resources and um, services. For transfer students, we have the transfer returning and veteran services. So if you are a transfer, a returning, or a veteran student, you can utilize this service. We have different tutoring and learning programs for students such as STEP, Success Mentor Program, and FitLux. We also have our Guardian Scholars Program and Undocumented Student Services as well. We have campus resources such as counseling and psych psychological services. We have health services as well as accessibility services. So at UC Merced, we wanna make sure that you feel supported. There are student support services and campus resources where you can seek professional assistance and support during your time at UC Merced. We also understand that basic needs has a direct impact on the mental, emotional, and physical health um, of our students. UC Merced has the basic needs hub where food sources are provided and food support is provided to students. We have CalFresh, our community garden, the Bobcat pantry, food distribution, Crop Mobster and eye care services 
that are available for students who do need um, food resources during their time at UC Merced. I know for sure the Bobcat Pantry is one that many of our students utilize especially during that time of finals where you just don't have time to buy groceries. Many of our students do utilize the Bobcat Pantry because they basically provide you with enough groceries for a week or two weeks. So you don't have to worry about going grocery shopping during the time of your exams. And then we also have career preparation through our Office of Leadership Service and Career. The Student Career Center provides various services such as job search assistance. So if you're looking for a job on campus or even as you're preparing to graduate, our Student Career Center can assist you with that. Many of our students who are alums also have a portfolio where you can um, import in letters of recommendations from your professors and anything else. So from the time you're at UC Merced to when you graduate, our Career Center is actually here to support you through that journey. Here are some of the places that students who have graduated um, from UC Merced are working at. So some of our students are employed at Genentech, Google, NASA, Yosemite National Park, Yelp. I don't know how many of you use Yelp, I do. Um, and some of the graduate schools that our students have been accepted to are Princeton, Stanford, um, UC Hastings College of Law, uh, Cornell University. So these are just some of the places that our graduates work and have been accepted to graduate school after they've completed their time at UC Merced. And then last but not least, for those of you who are interested in entrepreneurship or business development, we have various opportunities for you to get involved. We have UC Merced Venture Lab, which allows um, those of you who are interested in startup companies develop an idea into a commercially viable business. Through the Venture Lab, you can pro propose your business idea and you can get feedback as to whether or not this will be a successful plan. We also have Innovate to Grow, which is a graduate engineering um, work on capstone projects that identify community partners. So through the capstone project and Innovate to Grow, you can actually build solutions for community partners in the surrounding area. These are just a few of the opportunities that you have here at UC Merced for entrepreneurship and business development. All right, now I know we've talked a lot about just UC Merced, the experience um, during your time here as a student and after you graduate, but now let's switch gears and talk about admission requirements, what you need to have if you're considering applying to UC Merced. This presentation is for first year or freshman students and transfer students. So we're gonna begin this section first by looking at first year admission requirements. All right, first year admission requirements. These requirements are for those of you who are currently in high school and looking to apply as a first year or a freshman student. The first requirements that you need to have is known as the A through G. A through G requirement is a minimum of 15 year long high school courses. You can see in this table here, there's a breakdown of different subject areas, as well as the number of years required and years recommended. If you're interested in knowing which specific courses from your high school fulfill these areas, check in with your high school counselor or make an appointment with one of our admission advisors to go over the A through G courses that you might need. The second requirement for first year or freshman students is a UC GPA of 3.0 or above. If you are a non-resident or international student, this GPA is a 3.4. For those of you who might have questions about um, grades during the pandemic, we do have some major changes to our UC admissions policy for first year students. We have past and credit grades earned for courses completed during winter 2020 through summer 2021. UC will accept a grade of credit and pass. Courses completed during this time with pass or credit grades will satisfy appropriate A through G requirements, but will not be calculated in the GPA. For standardized, te standardized, standardized tests or SAT and ACT scores, UC Merced will not consider ACT or ACT scores for admission or scholarship purposes through spring 2025. 
If you do choose to submit your test scores as part of your application, they may be used as an alternate method of fulfilling minimum requirements for eligibility or for course placement after you enroll. All right, now we talked about the minimum requirements. Now let's look at what the selection factors are. Selection factors are 70% of our review and our, or 70% of our review is based on academic factors and 30% are based on non-academic factors. So these selection factors include your GPA, courses completed or are planned, honors courses, eligibility in the local context, the rigor of your senior year, progress and advancement in academic subject areas, achievements in special projects, positive grade trends, special talents, achievements and awards, participation in educational prep programs, and aptitude to excel in academics framed by life experiences. So while it is important that you are meeting the minimum requirements, we also look at the selection factors as well for freshmen or first year applicants. All right, now that we have covered the admission requirements for first year students, let's take a look at the transfer admission requirements. Transfer admission requirements will apply to those of you who are currently a community college student and looking to apply to transfer to a UC. At UC Merced, we are open to different levels of transfer students. We have early transfer and we have junior level transfers. So for those of you who are currently at a community college, there are two different pathways that you can consider if you're planning to transfer to UC Merced. For early transfer opportunity at UC Merced, students can transfer in with 15 units or less as undeclared, as well as 16 to 29 units as undeclared. You can also transfer before you have the 60 semester in a major pathway. So for those of you interested in early transfer, you can definitely reach out to us to schedule an appointment as each case will vary based off of the units that you have completed at your community and college. The next level of transfer that we have at UC Merced is the junior level transfer. Now, this is traditionally what most community college transfer students transfer as. If you are interested in coming in as a junior level transfer, you need to complete at least 60 semester or 90 quarter units of UC transferable credit. You also need to earn at least a 2.4 GPA in UC transferable courses. If you are a non-resident or international student, this is a 2.8 you see transferable GPA, and you cannot have more than 14 semester or 21 quarter units of pass, no pass grades. You also need to complete what's known as the seven course pattern by the end of the spring term prior to fall, if you are interested in transferring in for the fall. And you also need to complete the courses required for your major. This is known as major preparation. Now, I just like to highlight that although the GPA is a 2.4 minimum, for transfer students, you also want to take a look at your major as this GPA may vary based on your major. It may be higher than the 2.4 GPA. All right, for transfer students, there's something called the transfer admission guarantee. UC Merced participates in the TAG and this is a contract that specifies certain courses to be completed and a GPA in order to earn a guaranteed admission to UC Merced for your major. For those of you who are interested in coming to UC Merced and you wanna guarantee your spot, the TAG is a great way to go about it. Please note that the TAG requirements do vary from the minimum requirements. You can visit our website here for more information on the TAG, or you can also schedule an appointment with one of our transfer advisors to see if the TAG is an option that would be available to you. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about major changes to the UC admissions policy for transfer students. For passing credit grades earned for courses completed during winter 2020 through summer 2021, UC will accept a grade of credit and pass. Courses completed during this time with pass or credit will satisfy the appropriate requirements but will not be calculated in the GPA. All right. Now that we've talked about the admission requirements, let's look at the PIQs and admissions timeline. The personal insight questions consist of questions that are each limited to 350 words. 
These are short answer questions and you have a limit of 350 words. For first year or freshman students, you have eight questions to choose from and you are required to respond to the four of the eight questions. For transfer students, you have one required question and you will need to respond to three of the seven questions. Once again, it doesn't matter which ones you choose, they are all limited to 350 words. It's important that as you're looking at these PIQ questions, you're choosing the ones that you feel best represent your interests and that you can talk about with your different experiences. So just know that there are no separate weight or ways we graded these PIQs. They're all the same. And we recommend that you choose the PIQs that you can best relate with. That way you can tell more, tell us more about who you are as an individual and your academic experience or your experience outside of the classroom. The questions do vary. We'll go ahead and post a link to the UCPIQ website. That way you can see what these questions are. Some of them will talk about leadership skills, your creative or artistic ability, or why you stand out as an applicant to the UC. All right, so we are in fall. Many of you may have already started your application or are looking to apply for admissions to UC. August 1st is when the application became available. Basically, this means that you could start an application, you can start working on the different sections. Um, and then October 1 through November 30th is when you can actually submit your application. So as of right now, you can start the application, you can start filling them out, putting in your courses, but you won't be able to submit it until October 1st through November 30th. This is the filing period. For those of you who are interested in coming to UC Merced for the spring, because we are open fall and spring, UC Merced accepts spring applications in the month of July. It's really important to note as you are preparing to apply for admissions that it is one application to all nine undergraduate campuses. Basically what that means is you'll need to create your UC application account. And then on your UC application, you'll indicate the different campuses that you want to submit your application to. There is an application fee of $80 per campus. So just know that while it's one application, the number of campuses you select to submit your application to will be $80 per campus. There are fee waivers that are available to students who qualify. The fee waiver is part of the UC application. So you won't be able to see um, if you qualify for a fee waiver, unless you're actually putting in the information on the application. And then you can submit your application at admissions.ucmerced.edu slash apply, or you can also visit the University of California website to submit your application and get started on it. All right, so what should you do after you apply? After you apply, make sure you print a copy of your application. Research and apply for scholarships that are available at the different campuses that you've submitted your application to. Make sure that you apply for financial aid um, by the indicated deadline, March 2nd. So start your FAFSA or your California Dream Act application. One, you wanna make sure as well that if you need to update your application with any course changes or grades that you are updating your application during this time through the UC campus portal or through the transfer academic update. And then of course, the waiting game, right? Um, your admission decisions will be released between April and, uh, or March through April. So you wanna make sure that you're constantly checking your um, campus portal to see what your admission decision is. All right, now let's talk a little bit about financial aid. You can't afford UC Merced. So 84% of our students at UC Merced receive financial aid. For the academic year of 2022 to 2023, the average annual gift aid that was offered to students who are eligible for financial aid was 21,868. It's really important that you do apply for financial aid um, by the indicated deadline and you also submit your application. So once again, November 30th is the deadline to submit your UC application. You wanna make sure that you submit your FAFSA or your California Dream Act application by the indicated deadline. Um, and do stay posted on the FAFSA and California Dream Act application deadlines as this um, is currently going through um, a change. So just make sure that you're checking the websites. 
you want to make sure you submit a Cal Grant GPA verification form. This is really important for those of you who will be receiving a Cal Grant. And then, of course, complete and return any documents that are being requested by the Office of Financial Aid and Scholarships by the June 1st deadline. So there's a few steps there for financial aid, right? You want to make sure you submit your application, you submit your financial aid application, and then submit any other documents that are required for your financial aid. So on this slide here, I'm going to highlight a few opportunities um, for financial aid at UC. The UC offers a middle class scholarship, which helps to provide funding for um, students who may identify as middle class um, to attend the UC. This is on a sliding scale and students who are eligible for a middle class scholarship may receive up to um, a certain percentage. The income requirement for middle class is um, anywhere from 80,000 plus to $184,000 for middle class. For the Blue and Gold Opportunity Plan, this expands access to UC for lower income students. If your um, household income is less than $80,000 a year, the Blue and Gold Opportunity Plan will cover your system-wide tuition and fees. For both the middle class and the Blue and Gold Opportunity Plan, um, you don't need to submit a separate application. You will only need to make sure that you submit your FAFSA or your California Dream Act application, and you indicate the UC campuses that you're interested um, in applying to. All right, on this slide here, we have a cost of attendance for students who live on campus and students who plan to live off campus. So you can see the tuition and fees costs, room and board, books and supplies, transportation, personal experiences, uh, personal expenses, and health insurance. It's really important to note that um, on campus, your room and board may differ. This is an estimate of the cost of attendance, right? So I know, although you're looking at this, you're like, oh man, that's pretty pricey. The first thing you want to do, though, is make sure that you still apply and then see what your financial aid package is. Um, because without knowing what your financial aid package is, you don't actually know what the out-of-pocket cost is. So although you see the estimates listed here, make sure that you still apply, submit your financial aid, and then you can calculate how much it would actually cost out of uh, pocket for you. All right. And then um, on this slide here, we're going to talk about WUI. So WUI is known as the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program. This is a great program um, that allows students to study out of state. So there are different states that participate in WUI. If you're interested in coming to UC Merced, but maybe you want to spend a year um, or a couple semesters in a different state, you can participate through WUI, which gives you an opportunity to pay the tuition that you do as a California resident at UC Merced, but study in a different state. All right, so we are nearing the end of our presentation. We have a few next steps for you all. Um, if you are interested in exploring UC Merced or seeing what it is like um, to be on campus, we do have guided and virtual tours available. You can um, book a tour through our tours website. Um, we also are uh, active on our social media, so you can find us on Instagram at UC Merced Tours. We also have live guided tours um, that are both virtual and drone recorded. And then throughout the fall, we're going to have various virtual events um, and campus tour opportunities. If you would like to um, learn more about UC Merced or get some assistance with your application workshops, we will have more Discover UC Merced virtual events coming up this fall. And then, of course, if you want to come see the campus, we have campus tours in person. We have our virtual group tours and our live recorded tours. You can learn more about our events by scanning the QR code here. And then last but not least, if you are a transfer student and you're interested in participating in our transfer initiative program, which allows you to receive um, transfer advising as well as opportunities to get involved on campus and connect with other students, we do have our transfer initiative program here. Um, you can reach out to us at transfer at UC Merced if you are interested in being part of the TIP program. All right. 
Now, here is our contact information. We are active on social media. So make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We also have our YouTube channel in which um, this recording, as well as all of our other webinar recordings, will be uploaded to you. And we also have a TikTok, like that you see Merced. If you have any questions uh, or want to connect with someone on our team, feel free to reach out to us at um, the Office of Admissions. Our email is admissions at ucmerced.edu. And our general phone number is 209-228-7178. So with that being said, I'm going to pass the mic over to my um, colleague and friend, Ricky. Thank you so much, Sheila. What a wonderful presentation by both Sheila and Juan Carlos tonight. And what did I promise our audience? A jam-packed treat tonight with this presentation. We have almost used our entire hour with all of that information. So I hope that you took a moment, took some screenshots along the way if you needed any of that info. And speaking of screenshots, this would be a wonderful slide to grab your smartphone and take a quick picture. As Sheila mentioned, we have tons of social media. We are posting constantly. TikTok is our newest and greatest account that we did recently open about a year ago. So definitely follow us there. We are trying to post as much as we can videos of our campus life, student life, and just general community things around our campus. We also have many more events coming up and you will be hearing about those online as well as quick reminders. So before we start to wrap up tonight, we do have a couple of questions. Let's go ahead and see what we have. So one of them has to do with housing and do we offer UC Merced student housing? I know we did mention that early on. Can we just kind of recap that? Sure. Um, once again, any student who's specifically, let's say the first year or freshman, will be guaranteed two years of housing. And for transfer students, they guarantee one year. So after the second year, students could, could actually try to reapply for housing maybe or live off campus. But the great thing about living off campus too, for example, um, you will have access also to the meal plan if that's something that you're concerned about. Uh, and that's for any student. Again, you're not required to live on campus, but those are the options that we have for a student who will be attending UC Merced. Very good. Thank you so much for that. And let's see. So now also related to housing, if a student is interested in living on campus all four years or at least past the two year mark, are they able to do that? Well, one of the things that I always really encourage students to think about it, if you really like the uh, environment living in the dorms, I always tell so you know what, why don't you apply to a, a resident advisor position <laughs> that will give you an extension of you being after the two years would allow students to actually just be the like the manager or will be running the floor to making sure the activities or any kind of programs are done with that floor. And the student is possible to get uh, housing, well, we'll get housing in, in the dorms along with their meal plan as well. So, but you could always apply to and ask for dorms on to live on campus. Uh, maybe they get approved, we don't know. That's up to housing whether they're going to do that. Because keep in mind that we wanna make sure that we give a, uh, opportunities to all of our students who are attending our campus or will be attending our campus in the future. Very good. And also we have a question coming in specific to data science to that major. Do we know what the GPA is required for that? Or also that could be a general question just for general admission. Would, would that be as a, a incoming first year or a transfer? Uh, they're just saying a 2024 applicant. I'm thinking that may be first year. Well, keep in mind that for a student to apply to the University of California at Merced, you need to have at least a 3.0 GPA. We're going to calculate that you're utilizing your 10th, 11th grade. And among everything else, what Sheila cover in regards to the, the requirements and also the selection that we look for in a student. Very good. And the next question has to do with our out-of-state first-year students. Do we have a ballpark number or percentage of how many out-of-state students that we do accept? Well, those statistics we don't really necessarily have, but I know that 0.4% are either out-of-state or international students on our campus. Uh, but I know we do have a lot of students to apply to UC Merced, which we've seen the numbers, but not necessarily have that data available for that student. My apologies. No problem. All right, another question here. Um, let's see. Oh, what is the deadline for application? That's an important one for everyone to make a note. Yes, yeah, so the deadline for the UC, doesn't matter which UC you apply to, is November 30th at 11.59 p.m. 
Pacific time. If you're at Eastern time, that might be different, but 11.59 p.m. Pacific time, November 30th, do not wait and do not procrastinate because that system might crash or it might lag. So November 30th at 11.59 p.m. Yes, and definitely start that application early. Start practicing with those PIQ essay questions and just get your, your material ready early. Because even though we have a deadline, I know personally I can speak from experience. I do tend to procrastinate and it just stresses me out. And what happens if you're ready to go, but then the technology that you're working on or your internet fails. So make sure that you do work on those things and that you take full advantage of all of these webinars that we offer. Hop online with us, go to that website, check out the events, get yourself registered, and you can join us here with all of your questions early on so that you can start working on things right away. Now, I did see a question come in about campus tours. I went ahead and dropped over into our chat box a link so that you can get yourself signed up if you'd like to come and visit our beautiful campus. We definitely want to see you here, and it just has a special feel. When you're here, you will definitely get that feel. I keep using that word, but it is a feeling that you'll get. It's a family feel. And we definitely love to get to know our students firsthand. And we will start recognizing you and you will start recognizing us, especially from these online events. So make sure that you do get started and signed up for a campus tour. All right, let's see another question. Can I still take and apply for the medical program that is now offered? I'm wondering if they're talking about that BS to MD program. Yeah, that's a great question. If you're interested in the BS to MD uh, program that we are offering, you must submit a supplemental application um, along with your UC application. So if you are a high school student who is applying for fall of 2024, that application will need to be submitted. It is a very competitive process. So make sure you get in your application and we will have webinars on the BS to MD pathway as well. So um, we have we'll put our we'll put our link for our fall events, but if you're interested in the BS to MD program, definitely attend that webinar because there are certain requirements that need to be met and there is a separate application process that you must complete. Very good. I know we are at our hour mark, but we do have a couple more questions that I'd like to just throw out there and see what we can get answered here. Uh, so someone is uh, just letting us know that they're aware that Merced is a small town. And what is campus life like? And do we have any sports that we offer? As mentioned to you earlier, we do have athletics on our campus. We belong to the North Atlantic Intercollegiate Athletics. We do have that on campus. Uh, we also have those 200 clubs and organizations you could actually get involved with. Once again, as mentioned to you, if you can't find a club or organization you don't like, what better way to leave your legacy and start your own on our campus? We do have a lot of cultural events throughout the year, and we also have music festivals and little music festivals. As I mentioned to you earlier, we do have one big one, uh, the Coachella Festival, and that's, and that's that's our biggest event of the year. But again, it, it all depends also on the involvement of the student once they get onto campus. It is up to the individuals, as, as, as earlier Sheila had mentioned, in order for you to be successful at the university or on our campus, you need to tap into the resources for that support mm -hmm. so that you could actually be successful on our campus. And do we offer a golf club? Do you know offhand? At no. this moment, we don't have a golf golf team. Sorry. <laughs> guess what? That's something that you can create here. You just need a couple of friends that are interested. Boom. There you go. <laughs> so definitely, we hope to see you here and hope that you take full advantage of that opportunity. All right, let's see. We will try to get one more in here. Let's see, which one are we going to do? And they're disappearing as I look because we have fast fingers behind the scenes getting to them as well. Can we mention a little bit of information about double majors and what that means? Yeah, so you do have the opportunity to do a double major. Basically what it means is that you can have two majors. So for example, your primary major that you apply to at UC Merced can be like biology. And let's say you get here and you also want a degree in psychology. Now you can choose to double major, basically having two bachelor's degree in different majors um, at UC Merced. Now, if you're interested in the double major process, you will have to first get your UC Merced GPA. You have to be a UC Merced student. And then this is a process that you will work with your academic advisor on. So if you know that you want to double major already, um, regardless if you're a high school student or a transfer student, the most important thing is to make sure that you meet with your academic advisor 
to see what that process is because you'll need a UC Merced GPA. Um, your academic advisor will also be looking to see if you have courses in the double major or if you have time to complete a double major. So it is a process. Um, however, you will have an academic advisor who's going to be there to help you figure out the process and see if it's possible for you to get a double major at UC Merced. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Sheila. And do either of my friends here online, do you guys have any last minute words of advice you'd like to share before we close out? You can go for Sheila. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I think for me, it's just do explore your options um, that are available. Do your research as well, right? This is a place where if you apply to and you attend, you're going to be spending like the next couple of years of your life at. So you want to make sure that you're exploring the campus, looking at different resources and opportunities that are available for you at the campus. Don't apply to a campus because of the name or the prestige, right? You want to apply to the campus that is going to provide you the most resources and support for the things that you want to do. And of course, look at your majors, look at the requirements, and then take those campus tours, go to the open houses, because that's when you'll really get to connect with the campus and learn more about what's available for you. So that's that's my thing. Do your research, go out there and check out those campuses. I would like to say, basically, when you are looking at a campus, the last thing you should be looking at is the cost of attendance to that campus. The one thing you should be looking at is, is do I have the requirements in place? And, sh and and can I apply and be considered for admissions? And the reason for that is because a lot of times when students do apply or want to apply, the, the cost of attendance to a campus will stop you from applying. Keep in mind that every university you, you're looking at who want, that you want to apply to, they're going to try to do everything possible to make sure that they give you uh, what you need in order to attend that campus. And UC Merced, for the most part, does a very good job in providing those opportunities to those, to those students. So go with the idea, okay, I'm going to apply now and then Come hopefully if everything works out fine. Mid mid April, you're gonna get a letter from financial aid telling you this is how much it costs and this is how much money uh, we're gonna be giving you. That's when students usually make a decision whether it's the right place for them to go or not, based on financial need. And apply in time, please. Don't wait till the last day. If you do it the day before or even the week before or before Thanksgiving, even better. <laughs> Yes, that is the best advice ever. Do not procrastinate. Take it from someone who's an expert at that. That would be me. And do things early. What a wonderful event this has been. We've had a fantastic presentation as always. I love doing these events with everyone and seeing so many great audience members sending in, in these fantastic questions because that just shows us how interested you are in not only your college education and your future, but also UC Merced as your future home for that educational journey. Once again, check out that chat box. There's a couple links there for campus tours. There's one for upcoming events. You definitely want to mark your calendar for those and get yourself signed up and save your seat. You will see me here again, as well as Juan Carlos and Sheila and many others here because it is our job to get you ready to apply and become a part of the Bobcat family. Once again, my name is Ricky Hill, your e-recruiter. It's been so much fun. We hope to see you again very soon, either online or in person. Have a great night, everyone.